Hello and welcome to Wasted Potential, the show where we discuss the wasted potential of our favourite plot lines. The return of Frost to the playable roster was inarguably one of the most shocking developments in MK11. It's always nice to see some proper 3D era representation outside of MK4 characters and Kenshi in an era that seems to despise them. But despite having a full story mode and pre-fight exchanges to flesh her out, she's no more interesting than she used to be. To recap, Frost debuted in Deadly Alliance. She was one of Sub-Zero's recruits in the new Lin Kuei, and she had the same ice powers as him, but not nearly as refined. She joined him in travelling to Outworld to battle the titular duo, where she took an instant disliking to Sonya Blade, though I don't think any reason was ever given. Later, while separated from the others, Frost betrayed Sub-Zero and attempted to seize his dragon medallion, the symbol of the Grand Master of the Lin Kuei. The power of the medallion was too much, and Frost became frozen and presumed dead. Sub-Zero buried her in a tomb dedicated to the Cryomancers, an ancient race from Outworld that both are descended from. To my knowledge, this heritage has never once come up in the current timeline. Unbeknownst to Sub-Zero, however, Frost survived her freezing and returned to the Lin Kuei Temple in MK Unchained. She slaughtered a number of her former comrades before being frozen again by Sub-Zero until he could figure out what to do with her. In Armageddon, Taven bungled his way into the temple and freed Frost from her prison. After a brief skirmish, the disorientated Frost fled and joined the forces of darkness for the final battle. She made her second timeline debut in the MKX comic, where she was taking part in underground cage fights looking a bit younger than she was 10 years prior in the old timeline. She fought Sonya's daughter Cassie, how clever, and lost. She then showed up at the end of the series as part of a group hoping to join the Lin Kuei. Shortly thereafter, in a flashback in MKX, Frost would attempt to disrupt the peace talks between Sub-Zero and Scorpion, only to be frozen by Sub-Zero. Five years later, in the present day, she was nowhere to be seen. MK11 reveals that she was excommunicated from the clan for opposing peace with a rival clan she despises, despite having not been around when the two clans were enemies, and having had zero interactions with said rival clan herself. What is her problem with the Shared Idu exactly? She has zero connection to the Shared Idu or the old Lin Kuei, yet she acts like some sort of conservative extremist. This is what happens when a character is boiled down to their faction and loses all sense of individuality. She joins up with Kronika and the past Cyber Lin Kuei under Sector in order to acquire power so she can prove herself to Sub-Zero? She says that Sub-Zero held her back like she was Anakin Bloody Skywalker and he or Scorpion kicks her ass. She doesn't even go with the rest of the Cyber Lin Kuei to attack the SF base, instead remaining absent until seven chapters later, where she attacks Raiden because she desperately wants his attention despite her only interaction with him being when he told her about the Lin Kuei? Why? Why does she suddenly want his attention? Raiden fries her brain or something and takes out the Cyber Lin Kuei for good. Her final defeat doesn't come at the hand of Sub-Zero, her former mentor, because he's already had his chapter. Frost is just so... petty and pathetic. Originally, she wanted power for its own sake, which, combined with her spiky hair and blue costume, really just made her a gender-swapped Virgil without the backstory to make her interesting. I need more power. Now, she's desperate to prove herself to others, is via against ending a rivalry she has zero stake in, and is suddenly all about cyberization. What the hell even is this character? It's like they wrote this role for Sector or Triborg, who would try to reclaim the clan from Sub-Zero and maintain its purity, but then decided they wanted to bring back Frost and didn't want to cut such a valuable character as the Collector to free up space, so they removed the Cyborg and gave his role to Frost instead. And considering how into the cyberization she is, it's baffling that she's not nearly as automated as the male Cyber Ninjas, looking notably more human. I get that she's undergone Kronika augmentation instead, but it comes off like those fantasy races that have ugly, inhuman males, but the females are just attractive women with very few inhuman features. That or some anime-inspired Rule 63 Cyber Sub-Zero from DeviantArt. Such wasted potential. I think you missed out an L there, mate. Frost went from a power-hungry traitorous protege to this weird chimera of random Lin Kuei plot points with no real focus other than being evil. Frost has the potential to be a really sympathetic character with a really relatable motive if we give her an ounce of character beyond is a dick. So let's do exactly that. 
go back to her debut as Sub-Zero's apprentice. Maybe she heard about Sub-Zero and sought him out. Maybe, like in 2011, she was in the Linkway database as a person of interest during the invasion, and Sub-Zero goes through these files to find candidates for his revival of the clan. Either way, she joins the Lin Kuei and is given the name Frost. In gameplay, Frost originally sent Ice Blast along the ground, suggesting her powers are weaker than Sub-Zero's, or that she simply cannot control it enough to send an Ice Blast through the air yet. The latter is the case for our story, possibly being unable to cryogenically freeze people, only freeze them to death. She has the potential to be as powerful as Sub-Zero, but she has a long way to go to get there. He does his best to train her while also training the rest of the Initiates, but it's not enough. She lacks Max confidence, you see. Every time she sees Sub-Zero perform some incredible feat with his powers, she feels more and more inadequate. All that really separates the two is that he has had decades of training and an older brother to learn from to hone his skills and master his abilities. Frost has had none of that, so she looks utterly pathetic by comparison. And the gap is only widened by the Dragon Medallion, which enhances his abilities significantly. Her rivalry with Sonya comes as a result of her frustration at feeling and being treated like a rookie. Sonya means nothing by it, of course. Frost is a newbie alongside warriors with a decade of experience fighting outworlders, but it sets her off. This, then, is why Sub-Zero and Frost travel separately from the others, to give Frost time to cool off and to keep her from jeopardising this important mission. This does nothing for her confidence. This is what drives her into desperation. She is so desperate to control her abilities and be seen by her mentor and these legendary heroes of Earthrealm as more than an inexperienced burden, that she steals Sub-Zero's dragon medallion as he sleeps. The medallion is too much for her to handle and she is consumed by her own freezing ability. Sub-Zero is then impacted by Frost's supposed death more than not at all. He failed to adequately train her which led to her downfall, like Obi-Wan with Anakin. He blames himself and vows to never allow himself to fail another of his students. But Frost lives, awakening alone in a tomb in Outworld, feeling abandoned by Sub-Zero. Either due to the delirium she is said to have experienced in her Unchained ending, or simply from being left alone with her own thoughts as she makes her way back home, her mind slowly turns against Sub-Zero, blaming him for her lack of progress and vowing to kill him and take his place as a more competent Grandmaster. She is offered greater control over her powers by the villains to explain her joining them. Maybe it's Noob Cybot, the original Sub-Zero, who offers her this control during his assault on the Lin Kuei. Regardless, she never acquires this control, instead dying in the battle in Edenia. Using the power of Blaze to restore his brother and help Frost through her numerous issues would have been a far better ending for Sub-Zero in Armageddon than becomes an ice god that the Elder Gods want to destroy. In the second timeline, as Frost found the Lin Kuei through Raiden, one can infer that he had a vision of Frost and sought her out to send her Sub-Zero's way. I mean, when else would the two have crossed paths. So let's use that. Raiden sees a vision of Frost's betrayal and understands its cause. He warns Sub-Zero, who then uses this information to give Frost the training she so desperately needs. Thanks to this, she can now control her powers and has the discipline required to serve as Sub-Zero's loyal second-in-command. If Kwai Liang remains a cyborg upon his resurrection, then Frost can become the new human Sub-Zero. Regardless, she then shows up alongside her mentor when he comes to aid the combat kids at the end of MKX. Maybe he sends her along with her fellow successor, having some fun banter with her shared Ideu counterpart, or she stays to command the Lin Kuei while Sub-Zero goes with the kids to make their miraculous victory over such forces as Liu Kang a little less bullshit. As for MK11, well, present Frost would be the one to accompany Sub-Zero to the Lin Kuei factory. Since her MK2 era self would probably be too young, her counterpart would have to come from the time of the comic, with Kronika offering her control over her powers before Sub-Zero can. This leads to a clash of the two Frosts, with a twist on the standard dynamic where the villain can kill the hero with no negative repercussions, but not vice versa, which only Scorpion otherwise has. Maybe present Frost is captured and cyberized into the new Cyber Sub-Zero, horrifying past Frost into defection and helping Sub-Zero to destroy her future self to spur her from her cruel fate. She is then officially inducted into the Lin Kuei and receives her future self's old uniform to wear in the final battle against Kronika to avenge herself. It really does seem like Netherrealm settled on bringing Frost back for MK11 before they had any idea what they were even going to do with her. 
Frost is one of the better liked 3D era characters, enough so that she got a couple of cameos and a playable appearance in the new series, instead of being killed off in some distasteful joke like so many of her contemporaries. But despite that, she was just given Sector's motives, a bratty attitude, and a decidedly unfrost like new design. As one of the original protege characters, she really should have been treated along the same lines as Cassie and friends, instead of becoming this baffling mess of a character. And if you need more incentive to make her a good guy in the next go around, I recall that early on, the two Sub-Zeros had a sister that was left behind in America with their mother when their father took the brothers to the Link Way. A lot of fans in the mid aughts theorised that Frost was that sister. If that idea was followed up on, Kwai Liang's relationship with his sister could make for a nice contrast to his relationship with his corrupted brother. If you liked this video, why not subscribe and support me on Patreon like these fine people here? If not, then make sure to share it with your enemies so they can suffer along with you.